Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Ajwal. You can find me on the internet at Wise of Cooking. Uh, if you want to rant to me on Twitter or get up about how, the ter- how terrible this talk is or want to talk about uh, Tempo or TZ39 stuff. Uh, but today we're going to talk about building futuristic JavaScript applications using Tempo. So let's get into it. Uh, because I'm a self obsessed person, uh, let's first talk about me. So I am a compiler hacker at Egalia. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a free software consultancy in uh, Spain. We work on a bunch of cool things. We work on browsers, compilers, standards, like the ones that I'm going to talk to you about today, and a bunch of cool Linux stuff. Uh, I am also a TC39 delegate, which is why I'm talking to you about these things. I am the editor of my, uh, one of the editors of ECMO 402 and the champion of the proposal that we talked about today, and also happen to be one of the pro collaborators in OGS. Uh, just to give you a little recap about the history of the whole temple thing, what Buzz is all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you've used date, the date object, I mean, in JavaScript ever, uh, to do any sort of date time handling, you would know that it is severely outdated, it has serious issues, it was, uh, you know, it, it dates at least back to 1995, which is before I was born. So uh, how's that for a metaphor? Uh, but it's, it's, it, it needs a lot of repairs, uh, which means that if you're writing any serious date time handling application, you're probably using some popular third party libraries. Uh, they're, they're pretty popular these days in, in the JavaScript ecosystem. You're either using moment or, or Luxon date functions. Uh, and well, they, they fill a really important role in the JavaScript language, uh, but there's still quite a few problems. There's still deficiencies. Uh, if, you, if you follow uh, JavaScript drama, uh, not so long ago, uh, Lighthouse, which is a tool that that's a, sort of gives you uh, performance uh, tips regarding your JavaScript code, started flagging applications that use Moment, uh, asking them to use something that would use less bundle size. So that's, for example, one of the problems that cannot be solved in the user space, uh, among a bunch of others that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, but because of all these problems, we realized that something needed to be done on the programming language level itself. Thus, I bring you Temporal. So Temporal is a, a state-of-the-art date time handling proposal in, in JavaScript. It brings you uh, not only to the present, uh, but as you will see in the next few slides, quite into the future. Uh, one of the most interesting challenges that we had when designing the Temporal API uh, was, was certainly uh, about pairing to sort of conflicting things, right? There's JavaScript uh, proposals that you see that are more specifically get towards advanced users. You know them when you see them. There's others that are more sort of geared towards beginners, they make your life easier, uh, but not as much if you if you have been writing this language for like 10 years. Uh, and in Temporal, the beauty of the te- uh, Temporal proposal is that it tries to pair an ergonomic API with a special focus on some of the most common use cases uh, alongside uh, some really powerful features that accommodate some of the most complex use cases, some of the use cases that have never been uh, accommodated so far, things including local calendar support. Uh, so, so including calendars like the Hebrew or Islamic calendar or, or custom time zones of calendars. These are truly uh, features that, that have been so far overlooked. Uh, so temporal, uh, the thing that I talked about just now is now stage three, which is great news, right? Uh, except we don't really know what that means. So just to sum it up real quick uh, in the interest of time, it means that all the tiny details have been discussed. If you sit around in, in uh, our chairs for a long time and realize that we've basically exhausted everything that we could have done uh, while sitting in our chairs. So the specification text has been approved. The committee is now satisfied with the general design. And now the idea is to start implementing and using temporal. So uh, for implementers like us, that means that we will start implementing things in different polyfills. We will start implementing temporal in different browsers. 
And, and for you, uh, amazing JavaScript developers, it means that you can start using Temporal in your applications, including production. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of, of the huge, uh, honestly, API surface of Temporal, uh, you have a number of these classes that we're going to talk about uh, in, in the next few slides. Just to quickly go over them, there's instant, which uh, happens to exist in the exact time space. So, you know, it knows the exact time that has happened since the epoch. Uh, and then there's a bunch of fuzzy uh, time types. So there's plain date time, plain time, uh, plain date. They, they happen to be all subsets of plain date time. So they talk about more sort of fuzzy notions of time and, and dates, right? So, uh, hey, 8 a.m. the morning doesn't really matter how many exact nanoseconds are passed, right? Uh, and then there's a zone date time type, which is sort of the the ubermensch of all these types that encompasses all the different uh, use cases that we uh, that we so far offer, and and it can be completely uh, replace. Uh, it can replace totally date objects, but hopefully you would realize that you need something much less powerful. Uh, there's time zones and calendars which sort of play between these, and then there's durations which are used mostly for map. To quickly summarize this, uh, because this is going fast, but hopefully I'd be able to at least uh, you know, draw your attention in the span of 20 minutes. Uh, instance represent absolute points in time. So uh, something as granular and as, as boring, uh, you may say, as a number of nanoseconds that have passed since the epoch, which in this case is the Unix epoch. Right, 1970, uh, and and then there's the plane types, you know, plane date time and uh, friends who who deal with the regular world clock time and calendar uh, dates. Uh, when so, for example, if you're building a fitness tracker, it doesn't really matter if I'm in Moscow or, or in Amsterdam. Uh, all that matters is that I wake up at at 8 a.m. and eat a lot of bagels. Uh, don't go for one. Uh, calendars refer to human calendars, so, you know, uh, in, in common understanding, it could refer to the uh, Gregorian calendar, which is pretty popular. It may refer to the more obscure calendars, uh, but still used throughout the world, like the Buddhist calendar or the Hebrew calendar, the Julian calendar. Uh, and then there's time zones that refer to an exact offset, so something like uh, plus uh, one R from UTC, or a, a more sort of fuzzy human time zone, right? So something like uh, Europe slash Amsterdam, which may uh, represent different points of time, depending on uh, what time you're talking about and, and you know, if it's summer or not. Uh, zone date time, as I said, is a combination of an instant and a time zone. So it takes the, it takes the boring instant uh, and, and it pairs it with the time zone to project a, a date time from it, right? So if you, if you know which time zone you're in and if you know the exact number of nanoseconds that have passed, then, then you can give any information. You can tell me what time of the day it is uh, and, and, and so on. It's, it's the most powerful type we have. And then, uh, of course, all the arithmetic operations that are done in this space are done in durations. So what is the difference between uh, two dates or two times or two date times? Well, they're all durations. Uh, so enough talking, right? Let's let's get down to business. Let's make uh, an invoice calculator, which happens to be uh, not so common application of dates and times, but it does happen to be sort of a power user in terms of computation. And let's see how simple it is with Temple. So step one, uh, if, if I was building a, a calculator like this, would be to pick a date time picker. So you would, uh, all the cool kids have told me that these days you pick a date time picker, confident based on the random strategy. So whatever from the library you're using, uh, you'd, you'd pick something based on that, right? Uh, the key point is that it should return and ISO is it so one string. So this is the this is the string persistence format that is uh, uh, accepted all over the temporal API uh, and it's standardized by ISO. 
And uh, as long as it returns this format, uh, you should be able to construct a temporal type from this. Should it directly return a temporal type? Probably. I mean, these libraries were written in JavaScript for JavaScript uh, applications, right? So uh, given that temporal is the is the sort of future of dates and times of JavaScript, it makes sense that they could return temporal types. I guess I could uh, I could fork all these libraries and, and make versions of them that do this and uh, make that become really popular. Or, or some of you could do it. Uh, that that would be fun as well. Uh, there are already many that you can pick from. I, I went to NPM and quickly found out too. So there's React hyphen picker. If you're using React, there's date time picker. If you're using jQuery or nothing at all, which uh, I mean, it's just less code, but still jQuery. Uh, and yeah, you can you can drop any of these in. It would return an ISO 601 type, and you can use this this string right to construct a free date time object in temporal. So temporal is the namespace on the on the global. You can say temporal dot plain date time dot from, which is sort of a static constructor method. It's a it's a factory method, right? It, it takes in a, a convenient string format and, and it returns a plain date time object. So once you have two plain date time objects right here, you're making an invoicing application. So you, you at least need two, right? A, a starting point and an ending point. So now that you have two date times. Uh, you can find the difference between the two date times. You can find out how much you work. Uh, when you have a starting point and an ending point, uh, you can find uh, the difference by you know, difference methods. And uh, as we talked about, it's arithmetic. So the answer would be a duration. Now, one key caveat that I want to talk about, and one thing that you should know here, is that durations can be both positive and negative. And the direction is important. Uh, especially when you're adding a number of durations. If you're adding 50 durations and one of them is accidentally negative, then you're not going to notice that the answer is a little off and, and you'd end up charging less money, which you don't want to lose money, especially when you're dealing with money. You should uh, make sure. You can check the sign with duration dot sign. Dot sign is a getter. Uh, and, and you can also find just the absolute value. So whatever the sign is, it would return a positive result. So let's see here in this code example, we have two plain date times. We have earlier, which is well earlier, it's it's at midnight, and we have later, which is the same day but four o'clock. So uh, it's later. Uh, and just to notice the directionality here, there's two ways to find the difference. There's later dot since. Earlier, so here later is the receiver, and earlier is the parameter, right? Because it's been x hours since, you know, earlier, and and that would give you you can put in what is the largest unit you want to uh, you want in the output, and it would give you uh, you know a duration with four hours, or you can you can say until so because it's until it means it's until later right and and so the sign reverses this time earlier is the is a receiver and this time we just said minutes so it would give me two for 40 minutes which is uh also four hours uh if you change the objects if you say later until earlier it would be a negative result you don't want a negative result because we did not work uh negative four hours uh, and then once you have all these durations, you can find out how much you work. Once you have an array of durations, you can add them all up. Uh, my, my friends who like functional programming, clean code, might try a reduce method. I'm more sloppy, I tend to write code like that looks like this. So you can just have a for each loop or sort of a reduce method. Uh, one thing to see here is that we created zero durations using two different ways. So in one, we just uh, constructed a new temporal or duration object. And in the second, we use the uh, from method that we talked about from last time. If you notice here, I've used a spring format for the duration, uh, PT0S. And, and that was also sort of referred to in the last slides. Uh, let's, let's talk about it in just a bit. But remember to call absolute if you 
to. If you if you say total dot add duration dot absolute, that would just ignore the sign, which is something we probably need to do, right? To talk about this duration serialization format that I just talked about, uh, durations can be a number of units, right? It, it, a duration could be one years, two months, three weeks, and and all this duration can be represented in a string by this persistence format. So it, it's p one y two m. So so if you see the pattern here, it's p, which is constant. It stands for period. If you're uh, Curious. So period, one year, two months, one Y, two M, three W for three weeks, four day. Then there's a T for time, and then five hours, six minutes, seven seconds, so on. One thing to note here is that this format can use fractions. So you can say something, you can totally say something like uh, 2.5 months. But do keep in mind, that that it's it's probably a bit problematic because uh, so if if you use the template polyfill that I'm going to talk about in just a bit, it's written in JavaScript. JavaScript does not handle these numbers really well. Uh, the it, because it is IEEE uh, floats, uh, some of these fractions cannot be actually represented in JavaScript. So if you're using fraction, probably stick to uh, these objects, but if you want, you can use the uh, string format. So now that you have the duration, uh, you can charge money by the hour. Uh, depending on the contract, actually, you might want to charge per day, per hour, per month, uh, whatever the contract is, really. The math is easy. And the math is so easy, in fact, that it's both integral. For all these related mathematical operations where you have a big duration and you want to bring it down to a single unit, you can just use the total method. Uh, so let's see here. I'm, I'm, I'm a weirdo who calculates the time I worked in one sort of second durations. So if I work a total of a million seconds, it actually just means that I, uh, you, you can see I use the total method here to say that I want all this in unit hours, and it would give me 277 many seconds. So that's how, it, how much I work. That's not a lot, uh, but, but I like to calculate that in seconds. So once you have that, one last thing that I want you to remember is that relativity is important, right? Uh, we talked about things like 2.5 months. Now 2.5, what's the meaning of 0.5 month or even one month is really relative to when you're talking about. Uh, right now, one month might mean uh, 31 days. In February, one month might mean uh, 28 days. So, uh, you know, an, an example would be that we can have a duration that has 2,756 2, hours. And if you take that total related to two different times, right? It's actually the same point in time. It's uh, in, in this case, it is first uh, of January twenty twenty midnight. It's also first of January twenty twenty midnight here, but in this one, it is in the time zone Europe slash Rome, which, uh, as you know, is a real time zone that does the daylight savings. So uh, in this case, the number of months that have passed is slightly less so because they didn't have the daylight savings here they did have the daylight savings here so some of these things do make sense uh given relative to what we're talking about uh, a quick example could be uh, that that in, in many places if you take an unpaid vacation day off uh, you get paid a constant amount of money uh for every month to respect of how many days in the month there were but if you take a single unpaid day off, let's say, uh, the, the, the money that they pay, pay you less is actually dependent on the number of days that there were in that month. So, uh, you know, taking an unpaid day off in, in July is technically much cheaper than taking one in February. So, so all these things, of course, need to be taken into account. That's why you can use relative to to provide exactly what you were able to. And next off, you have rounding. So uh, now that we have all these things, the fat final value can just be rounded up or down depending on 
to what contract we're talking about. But sometimes you don't charge by a, by a single unit, right? You don't charge by every hour or every day, uh, but you charge by a number of Xs, right? A number of days, a number of hours. And if you think about it, charging by the day is technically that, right? When I say I charge per day, that means that I charge per eight hours. That doesn't mean that I'm, I'm talking about charging per uh, 24 hour chunks. So this gives you a, a sort of more uh, powerful method called round. And unlike total, it's you can do more fun things with it. So let's say that I, I had a six minute appointment with an immigration lawyer and the immigration lawyer actually charges per every five minutes. And of course, they, they round up. So if I spend six minutes with them, actually, I need to pay them double the amount if I just talked a little faster, uh, which is why I should talk faster now. Uh, but that, that's all fun stuff, right? We talked a lot and have, had a lot of fun. But now it's time to do something uh, more sort of practical. Uh, so I'm pretty sure a few of you had your phones out. But if you scan that, that QR code, I can, I can show you that for a bit more, uh, you will find the spoke sandbox that I, that I made for you. Uh, and this is the fun stuff, right? The code sandbox is actually about a job application form. So you can fill stuff up like the date of birth and, and where you work from and where to. And it calculates a bunch of stuff. It's just an uh, example. But the fun stuff is the calculate age method on this one is written using the moment API. The calculate time to interview is written using the Luxon API. And calculate job experience is written using plain on date. And your job now is to actually re rewrite all these methods. There's links to the dots all over the place. And you need to follow the comments. And, and you need to fork this code sandbox and write the code using Temple. And you could see, maybe you can just comment it out and, and see the new code. But, but you'd see uh, a bigger improvement. Uh, you'd see less code. And you'd see code that makes more sense to you, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to see what solutions you come up for these. So let's uh, no, let's quickly go back to uh, my slides. Wait. Okay, that's my slides. Let's quickly go back to this. Okay, so you can scan that. And uh, I'll, if I'm there, I'll probably just paste the link to the chat. And quickly, links to the future and present. I'll, I'll send you links to these slides as well, so you can click around these. Here's a link to the polyfill. We're using this polyfill also in the code sandbox. So this is a polyfill that we came up with, the Temple Champions. It's sort of a reference implementation, and it works. It should be work like it, it should work in production as well. So you can follow that. There's a issue on V8 for, for when Temple would land in Chromium, uh, in Chrome, and Edge, and all your favorite browsers, uh, and also Spider Monkey for Firefox, which is my favorite browser. And you can keep uh, refreshing these uh, JavaScript core if you, if you like uh, Safari. And I, I try to refresh them every five minutes to see if there's some progress. Uh, but there is a, an, a repository for Temple V2 for all the new ideas that we're coming up with for sort of a future extension to this. And just quickly need to thank a bunch of people. I want to thank the Temple Champions for working on all these special things, uh, the MomentJS maintainers for kickstarting the original proposal, uh, the organizers in PC for inviting me and, and for facilitating this entire uh, event, and Olga for, for helping me build the code sandbox. Thank you, everyone. But last but not least, thank you. And that's it.